Welcome to another tech video. So today we are going to be running through a fairly quick um, video for you. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 um, and we use it to run our Pi Hole server on. Um, however, we are going to be changing the way that we do it. So we're going to be using this um, for a different project going forward. So um, we're going to, we've stopped using it basically. Um, now the functionality of Pi Hole is brilliant for blocking all sorts of malicious content on the internet. Um, we use it only at home, um, but we've got the ability to use it anywhere, um, supporting our cl clients and customer base. Um, we use it for blocking malicious content. Um, we don't use it for blocking ads and things like that, but it's purely for malicious content um, to make sure that actually um, wherever the family are surfing on the internet, um, they remain protected. They don't go to malicious uh, websites or anything like that. Um, however, we're going to stop using that because uh, that's for another project and we are going to be installing Pi-hole on our QNAP server that we've got here. So we use a QNAP for a couple of things. So um, we use it for serving uh, media content throughout the home using Twonky Media, where, which is a media server. So that's a way that we can share all of our videos and our pictures um, from holidays and things like that throughout the home. So it can be picked up on any of the TVs. Um, but we also use it for backups of all of the systems here. And we also use it for um, uh, sort of long-term storage for, uh, for various bits and pieces. It's um, a TS251, so it's a two-bay NAS system um, running in RAID 1. So it's 10 terabytes of storage on it. And we're going to be utilizing that to install Pi Hole. And we're going to go through the steps that you need to do or to follow to enable you to use your QNAP server with um, Pi Hole and take advantage of blocking malicious content and adverts and whatever lists that you decide that you want to block using it. So without further ado, let's run through the install process. Okay, so once you've logged on to your NAS system, the first thing that you want to do is we want to go into our App Center. Um, if you've not got the icon on your desktop, then you can find it via the main menu on the left hand side here. We're going to go into the App Center and we're going to install um, something that's called <coughs> Container Station uh, and that is under the Utilities menu on the left hand side. So as you can see here we've got the Container Station utility and we want to click on Install to get that installed and it will then prompt you where you want to install it on your system. So um, you can create a separate um, storage area, uh, a separate volume if you want to, um, but we're going to be selecting our system volume. Uh, we've we've got a, um, a TS251 Plus, so it's a two bay NAS uh, running in RAID 1, and um, we're going to just be installing it on the system partition. So you select the partition that you want, and we're going to click on OK to install that. This will take uh, sort of three or four minutes to uh, complete the install. So first of all, it will download the software and then it will um, install it. And up in the top corner here, you will see that the task is running and you will also see it in your app center. It will show you the progress of the installation. Okay, so once that's installed, you will see um, on your desktop, you should now have a separate icon so we can either click on open here or you can close the app center and then you can click on the link that will be on the front page. So what are we going to be installing? So we're going to install Pi-hole and it's the uh, official repository and there's a couple of steps that we need to run through first of all. So as you can see here um, it's going to create a shared folder name called container to store the images and the containers and that is going to be on the um, partition or the, um, the area that we selected earlier. So we're going to click on Start Now.
And as you can see, it will start the uh, container station after creating the relevant container shared directory. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to cr click on create because we're going to create a new um, a new Docker image in the container, and we're going to search for pi space hole. And it's going to bring back a few different selections. So we want to select the um, official repository or the, the official pi hole Docker image from pi hole, and we're going to click on install. Now you can select various versions. Um, we are just going to accept the default, which is the latest version, and it will automatically work out what um, the what the the processor type is, etc. So we're just going to click on next, and we're going to say that we understand because this is a third-party app, and we're going to be installing it on our QNAP system. So we're going to select OK to that. Okay, now this is the section where you're going to enter your various um, options. So we're going to give it a name. We're just going to accept the default name. We're happy with that. Uh, there's no commands to run. Uh, the entry point can be blank, and we're going to leave it on auto start. Um, now the system itself doesn't take up much uh, processing power, so we're going to leave that CPU limit as uh, 100%. Um, and also our memory limit, we've got 8 gig of memory installed in this system um, and it wants you to give it, uh, you can either create a slice of how much resource that you want to give the system or you can leave it um, as default. And we're going to accept the defaults. Now the most important bit is under the advanced settings, so we want to click on the advanced setting. Um, we don't need to give it any environment variables. Um, but we do want to go in and change our um, mechanism for the network mode and we want to select that as bridge. Now the reason that we do that is because um, it w we, the system will listen on um, whatever IP address you give it. Now this is, and we're going to be creating a static IP address uh, and the reason for that is because actually we're going to update our DHCP um, lease information on our DHCP server to always um, issue out uh, the IP address of the Pi Hole server that we're going to give it here. So we're going to give it a static IP address and you want to make sure that you give it an IP address that is not currently in use on your system. So at the moment uh, our NAS drive is set to 240, so we are going to give it a different IP address and we're going to give it something that is not in use on our system. So we're going to give it uh, a 248 IP address and then we're going to click on the next options, which we don't use. So run containers in privilege mode, we're actually happy with uh, the standard and we're not going to give it any information here because it's going to work all that out, out itself. Um, and once we've got our IP range, so what I'm going to do is click on Create. It's going to confirm the settings, as you can see here, and then we're going to select OK. That will then go off and download the Docker image from Pi-hole. And as you can see here, you don't get an icon in your background tasks, but you do get an icon of your background tasks inside the container station because it's actually the container station that's doing all the work. It's not the physical NAS drive itself. So it's the app inside the, um, inside the NAS. Okay, so that's completed. Once that's done, you can go back to your overview and you should see it now running, as you can see here. So our Pi Hole is running as we've got the status. So now we should be able to uh, access the system. So if we click on Open Link, it's going to say to us, are you sure you meant to do this? Uh, we want to go to our admin panel and here we are at our latest Pi Hole version. As you can see here, it gives it its own host name. 
can't change that or you you can probably change it inside the uh, via the terminal server but we don't need to do that um, and you can click on login however you are not going to be able to log in because the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to set the password um, from the default because we don't actually know what it is okay so um, let's go back to our container station and what we're going to do is we want to go into um, our container station and we actually want to run a command so that it uh, we actually want to run the command that then tells the system to um, give us a new password so we're going to set the password so we want to click on the terminal icon just here and we're going to give it a command and we want to run the following command pi hole minus a minus p and that should give us a prompt and there we go you can see up the top here that actually we're now going to be setting a password <coughs> for the pi hole system so you want to type this in twice and that is the new password set and you're going to get an exit code because actually the terminal window is only running that single command that you've given it so now you can say OK, you can close that terminal window, you can go back to your Pi hole system and we can enter the password that we just set and we can click on login. And here we have the full operational Pi hole now running on the QNAP device with the IP address that we've given it. You will notice that it's not secure so there is no HTTPS certificate installed for it um, but that can all be managed later if you choose to but uh, in our instance we're not going to be bothering with that because it's running on our internal network so now that's done what we're going to do next is we can actually um, go to our uh, firewall or our router and we can change the DNS server for the DHCP leases so we're going to go ahead and do that which is our PFSense device and to update the uh, DHCP server on your system if you're running PFSense you can, whatever your system you're using it will be slightly different from this obviously but for us we're going to go into the DHCP server because it's only IPv4 we're going to scroll down and as you can see here we've got our DNS servers set to 192.168.0.1 so we're now going to change that to 0 0.248 which was the IP address that we gave it and we're going to click on save Right, so now we can double check things. Um, as you can see here, we've got the um, DNS server saved. So now we should be able to go back to our system here. And we're going to show you uh, DNS settings. So at the moment, you can see our DNS server is 192.168.0.1, which is our PFSense device. Now, if we renew our lease, We should now have our different DNS server set. And as you can see here, 192.168.0.248 is our DNS server from the Pi hole. It already knows the Pi hole, uh, already knows the gateway IP address. So when we start looking for different websites, we should now see things start to increase there we go so we can see our queries have now started to go up because our system is pointing to the pf blocker uh, sorry the pi hole on our qnap device 
you can see here that we've already got some uh, queries blocked and you can see the system is actually now responding and here is our client IP address which is our system that we're working on so you can see that actually the requests are now going through and working correctly. So if you want to update your lists, so as you can see here, number of domains on our block lists, um, you can do that by going through the uh, various settings. So we're going to click on settings. And then if you want to change your lists, you can do um, the uh, lists via the group management pages. So if we click on group management page, you can see here that actually we've got one list that's enabled. Um, and you can set all of your various lists in here. So go off on the internet, find the lists that you want to use, make sure that they're compatible with um, the latest version of Pi-hole, and then you can install those and you will see your um, domain lists increase. The graphs will build up over time um, and obviously all of your services or all of your devices on your network will start using your Pi-hole server on your QNAP device. So that's all there is to it. Um, if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.